Men were shouting at one another in the streets while women and children cried. People rushed in and out of houses, hastily throwing possessions into wagons as they prepared to desert the city. The cacophony of wagons being loaded, people running, shouting, and slamming doors assaulted the travelers' ears, even though there was no sign of the iron spider anywhere to be seen. Valerie knew she didn't need to hunt the thing down. She had an ace in the hole. She would use herself to bait the probe and expected it to appear any time. All she had to do was wait, because she had not been stung as she had claimed to the farmer on the road. If she was patient, the drone would come to her, and when it did, she would be ready for it. I haven't been stung yet, Valerie reminded Ammon. It'll come to me soon enough. All we have to do is wait right here. We need to be ready for it. All right, Ammon agreed. We're in the center of the city. If it is still here, it will find us. Remember, it is very fast, so we must keep on the watch. You look that way, and I'll look the other way. I will be the eyes in the back of your head. Valerie smiled at that, knowing that Ammon wasn't joking this time. Her favorite hunter was dead serious. Knowing that Ammon had her back ratcheted her confidence up a notch. The searchers were silent as they sat atop their horses, listening to the terrified citizens of Brescia tear their city apart and brawl over the possession of wagons and pack animals. No one seemed to care that they had an audience, ignoring the fact that a pair of strangers sat idly by observing as they went completely and utterly mad. Valerie palmed her thumb ring but didn't put it on, aware that whoever saw her would definitely care if she was seen with it on. One look at my eyes and they'll see me as a witch, and at worst, regarded as being associated with the evil thing tearing the city apart. The people of Brescia were frightened out of their wits, temporarily insane beyond reason. As crazy as it was in the city center, there was still no sign of the probe. Then it occurred to her that she could not allow the resource seeker drone to get to her under any circumstances. If that were to happen, there could be severe repercussions. The Boeki are highly advanced. If they ever got their hands on a sample of my DNA, they might discover something I don't know about. The thing that makes me special, whatever that is. Who knows what might happen then? Valerie, I think it's over there, Ammon pointed excitedly. Startled out of her musings, Valerie turned her horse around so she could see where he pointed. A commotion arose a few blocks away in the direction Ammon was keeping watch. Soon it became evident that although they hadn't seen it yet, the probe was in that neighborhood. It was impossible to miss. They heard the cries, the shouts, and the cries of terrified animals. Frightening, isn't it? she observed. But Ammon didn't respond. Instead, he reached for her arm and held it to silence her. She understood immediately, glanced at him, and saw that his eyes were fixed on a certain building in the distance. When a terrified woman rounded the corner running with a child in her arms, there was no question the probe was nearby and would be quick to follow. The time had come for Valerie to put on the fifth ring, so she slipped it on her thumb and prepared herself for the unavoidable confrontation with the frightening Boeki resource seeker drone. Then Valerie heard a strange sound, the unmistakable eerie thrumming sound produced by the drone's electromagnetic drive. When it appeared, the speed at which it moved was breathtaking. The alien mechanism zoomed at lightning speeds, a blur that any eye would struggle to track. Now she was certain that no one could escape its spider-like grasp, just like Ammon had described. The iron spider was on the woman so fast that its movements blurred. Six long arms wrapped around her and her child so quickly, so effortlessly, that she never missed a step or lost balance. The freaked-out screaming mother ran with the thing's legs wrapped around her head as if she hadn't noticed it at all. Bright lights flashed on her and then the child, and in the time it would take to say run for your lives, it had acquired another pair of DNA samples and was already rocketing toward the next sample source, the crazy woman on the horse. Hitting the thrumming thing mid-flight was out of the question. There was too little time. However, Valerie had it frozen in time, inches from grasping her. 